welcome to this eighth movie in this tutorial series on Poser Pro 2014 and Poser 10. I'm Mark Bremer and we'll continue to take you through this series. We are beginning to look at animation and don't worry we're not going to just animate cubes. We're going to be starting off with something basic, going to cryogenic chambers, and then wind up with organic forms. However, we're going to split this into two movies because even at its basic best, animation is not necessarily a simple subject. There's ways to create good animations, but only if you know how to finesse some of the controls, where to find them, that type of thing. So let's get into some real basics and then we'll start uh, with our animation, or I should say our cryogenic chamber opening in just a second. I have a cube in here. We're going to talk about some of the default features of Poser that makes life very easy for you when you begin animating. Let's go across our animation timeline here. And if you've been going through this series in order, we've actually done a little animation with one of the characters in the pose section. And we're going to get into much more robust character animation in the next movie. But let's look at the basics. Down here in the lower left, I've got some dots, our interface, or I should say our pose dots right now, I have those selected. When we start working with more complex characters, you can go ahead and save poses and then animate between them really easy to do and we'll have that coming up. We have our transport controls down here that are your typical type of DVR movie play. Frame forward, frame back, all the way to the back or and then all the way to the front here. We've got our time slider which allows us to go ahead and move through time, that fourth dimension. And as I move it you'll notice that the frame counter over here is keeping track of where I am in the animation. Now this whole idea of frames and what they actually mean as it relates to time. Poser is an American company and so set up in the US it has a default frame rate of 30. That's because broadcast television has a frame rate of well 29.97 frames per second which means that when you hit the render button inside of Poser for an animation for every second of motion you're going to have 30 separate images that jam into that. This is editable and we can change it to like 24 if you're going to be doing you know, something that's going to get published on the web or something like that or even 15 if you want to and we'll take a look at that. We also have the ability to jump back and forth between keyframes. Well before I get into this let's do a simple animation so we can see what's going on. The time marker is at 1, the first frame in our animation. Let's go ahead and just randomly click part way down the line here to frame 9. I'll select the cube. I've closed the library again so we've got more room to work with. And I'm simply going to translate this one way with the X tool. We'll move back to, let's say, 16 or so. And I'll move it over here. And then finally, towards the end, I'll just move it back close to center. If we grab our time marker, I can scrub the timeline with it. And we see this animation going on. Well, what we have done is created something called keyframes. This little key here, that's what that's about. And if I go ahead and click on this, this opens up our animation window to see where those keyframes are. We've got a very long list of everything that's in our scene, including background, atmosphere, lights, cameras, basically everything in Poser can be animated over time, and that's really cool. The keyframes for the motion that we have going on happen to be these bright green squares inside of this presentation right here. So if I grab the time marker up here and we move around we can see this animation going on behind us over here. Let me go ahead and scrub through this just a little bit more. If I don't want, for example, this um, shall we say pause right here in the middle, I can simply select this keyframe, press the delete button or backspace on my keyboard and it goes away. So now what we have is we have only two keyframes. How did this happen or where do keyframes come from? Back in the glory days, the, the new days of animation, you would have a master illustrator that would draw particular poses of a cartoon. And those were called the keyframes where he wanted a certain expression, a certain body position, and then all the junior animators would draw those individual frames in between. That's where keyframes come from. Now you'll notice I clicked on this little key button right here to see what's going on. You can also access that same window up here under the animation palette. Let's open this up and take a little closer look. This is the Poser 2014, so I do have some features that you may not have if you're working with Poser 10, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So we've got some items here, keyframes we'll be working with. I'd mentioned frame rate before. 
when we open the frame rate here we can auto select between say 12 frames all the way up to 60 if we're going for hyper definition we also have a couple other little items up here layers which allows us to create seamless types of transitions between pre or created animations and we'll get to that in the next movie and some animation sets which we don't have in place at this point in time we also have a layer select here and that's for multiple layers when we start creating those we won't do that in this first movie right here so don't worry about that okay so we've got this set right now I'm going to leave it at 30 frames a second close this up that's the basic introduction to keyframes now let's move on to another inanimate object and we'll look at ways to not only animate but create a little more sophistication to it rather than really basic stuff that make people say you know what an amateur did this let's close this window right here and actually go to our other window which happens to be not that one let me just go ahead and close this one don't need to save this let's open our cryo machine and this is uh, an object that happens to be in the library under the props section right there for household or furniture items I forgot what it is I laughed when I saw it what we're going to do is animate this particular object right here and if I select it we see we've got unit one and we have the glass when I set, select glass we see the parameters change and they've been relabeled by the author of this object many of them that you use with other characters they simply relabel these things as no need no need and there's only one that's labeled as opening the funny thing is is that when you start working with objects you kinda see the personality of the people that put it together Duh, it's a sidebar alright what I want to do is have this glass open up in my scene a little bit let me reposition the camera we're at frame one and in this case let's make it more than a one second animation let's make this about five seconds so that's like a 1001 two three four five to do that at 30 frames a second what is five times three fifteen so this is going to be a hundred and fifty frames to get us to a five second animation at 30 frames a second now as we start working with animation the best thing to do is get the course animation done and have it out of the way so what I'll do is I want this to hesitate after it opens a little bit and then we're going to finesse this and then when it gets to the top we're going to go ahead and have it stop but we're going to have a little bit of wiggle going on with that so let's get the course animation done I'm going to move down my timeline right here remember 30 frames a second so in one half second that would be well approximately 15 frames let's go to 10 frames what I want to do right now at this point is have this open a little bit but stop so it's opened eh, maybe not even that far let's go with two degrees and this would be like where pressure is releasing inside of it or something and we could do some post special effects and have a little fog come out we can have the the sound sweetened in there so we kind of hear it opening and air escaping or something once we get it to that point I'm going to move down the timeline just a little bit and I'm going to click again because I don't want any motion between this point and what goes on next so I'm simply going to click the keyframe button and what we'll do is I'll click the plus button right here and we see a keyframe get added right here Now let me pull this off to the side so it's out of the way then I want this opened all the way let's go ahead and move all the way down here to let me grab my time marker eh, somewhere in there and I want this open more so let me go ahead and open this up all the way and we'll have it stop there and then we're going to start finessing this animation a little bit so look what happens when we go ahead and scrub the timeline come to the beginning it opens it pauses then it opens more and then it stops let's bring over our animation palette again and see exactly what's going on I'll scrub this here to the very end where the motion stops and what I want to do is to go ahead and move down just a couple frames three right here and we currently have this open to 80 degrees 
let me have this bounce just a little bit and close down to 78 degrees and then I'm going to move down just a couple frames again or maybe one we'll go with one and we'll shorten that little bounce cycle and open this back up to 80 so we're finessing this motion right here and creating some real-world type of bounce let me move this over to the side and again if you grab the corners of these things they are repositionable you can kind of see what's going on now let's scrub back to the very beginning right where this opens I want a little bounce in there as well so and this is where it's nice to have large screens if you can I'm working in a small space right here we need to be able to see what's going on so we can see our keyframes right in the center here the bright green ones let me scrub the timeline a little bit so this opens right about here I want it to bounce down just a little bit so I'm going to move the opening down to one second and then it pops up again or it moves up to this point and then begins opening and we get our motion as it goes the way all the way through now there's ways to start finessing this and this is the second part of the animation or I shouldn't say the second part in this we'll start looking at how we finesse this now we see that we've got something right here that says graph display and I don't believe that you've got these types of controls in Poser 10 you do in Poser Pro 2014 obviously if I click this we'll get another window that opens up this also is available from Windows right here under the graph or in my case shift command G it will be shift control G if you're on the PC what we're seeing is a visual representation here of the type of motion that's going on by default for smooth motion we are using something called a Bezier curve and it's just nice and smooth we can see right here that we get these gentle curves to the motion which makes it a little more believable this too is editable we can go ahead and adjust how significant this what's called tweening between each keyframe is we can make it sharp we can make it curvy we can make it a direct line translation here we've got constant here we have a linear selection and then we have happen to have a spline selection as poser calls it right here we see a representation of these controls up here as well which lets us know that we can go ahead and change any one of these keyframes if we want to why is this important well there's times uh, particularly with organic forms that you want this soft motion things bouncing that type of thing that go on great way to uh, create believable motion pretty easy but there's times you want very sharp and abrupt type of things so you can go ahead and change some of these with the actual graphing editor here and if you don't have the graphing editor then you can simply use the selections that we have if I click the little sharp selection or select these points right here I can change how those are interpreted we see this flatten out a little bit and I wish I could zoom into that to help out a little bit with that but I can move from keyframe to keyframe with the keyframe editor so I don't have to keep dragging the tweener back and forth to work with it so let's go ahead and close these up real quick and see exactly what's going on I sharpened one of those keyframes and we can see that it changes the presentation of the frames as displayed inside of the animation editor right here green is the smooth ones the spline based ones or bezier curve the red ones are the sharp ones and if we went with a linear translation which means from one keyframe to another it immediately just changes then we could go ahead and see what goes on with that if I click that it goes to gray Let me come back and smooth that out again we'll come back to this other keyframe right here and again I can hop back and forth between those with the transport controls for keyframes and we'll smooth that out let's close this and see what's going on go ahead and go all the way back to the beginning we'll hit play and we get a little bit of an open right there we could pause that and hesitate it if we wanted to now we get a lot of motion up here at the top so we can go finesse that using the keyframe editor if we want to I would stop that just pop this open we can come down inside of our animation window here and bring some of these closer together I want I can click and drag that keyframe around and you can also if you happen to 
select multiple keyframes, you can go ahead and copy those and paste them somewhere else in the timeline as well if you want to make those adjustments. So there is a lot of sophisticated abilities inside of the animation tool set here to begin working with your characters. So to recap, before we get into the next movie where we'll cover a lot more, I should say, complex functions, we've got the ability to create automatically keyframes using the basic animation editor here in our scene. We can control and enter manually where we are in our scene with the frame editor. We can decide how long this animation is with the quantity of frames that we have here. But we can also access this from the windows and the animation palette that we can get to by clicking on the key here. This is where we can adjust frame rate, time, length of time of the movie, and then we get all our other controls and access to all the objects in the scene to animate. So if we disclose any of these items right here, and we'll get into this in the next movie in detail, each item has its own set of controls and all parameters that can be animated inside of that. Very cool capability. Animation is a total blast, and I know you're going to enjoy working with that in Poser 10 and Poser Pro 2014.